How to Write an Annotated Bibliography. Good morning and welcome to the library's instructional video on how to write an annotated bibliography. Most, if not all, students enrolled in this university will have to write an annotated bibliography sometime in their academic career. My name is Tanya and I will be guiding you through the process of writing one today. Learning Outcomes. As a part of this video, I have compiled a list of learning outcomes that I hope each of you will be able to complete by the end of this video. Each student will be able to apply critical thinking skills when choosing relevant sources. They will be able to evaluate the credible sources they chose to figure out its strengths and weaknesses. They will be able to properly create a citation for the source. They will be able to create an annotation analyzing and stating the relevance of the sources. Each student will be able to define the importance of critically assessing the sources. And finally, each student will be able to use all of the above outcomes to properly format and create an annotated bibliography. What is an annotated bibliography? An annotated bibliography is an alphabetically ordered list of sources with a brief annotation under each. The sources chosen should be directly related to the topic the student has selected and can be books, ebooks, journals, articles, websites, documents, etc. Students should be selective and use critical thinking skills when choosing sources. Sources should be formatted according to what the professor has stated. Some examples of those formats include APA, MLA, and Chicago. The annotation should add value by using varied styles of thinking, including critical, creative, and reflective. Bibliography and Annotation Under each properly formatted source should be a brief annotation describing not only the content of the source, but why it is valuable to your chosen topic. This is where being able to critically analyze a source comes in handy. Not every source that you come across should or will be chosen. Only sources that add value and are critically analyzed should be included. The first step in creating an annotated bibliography is to choose your sources. This step can seem daunting at first, but you don't have to read every source that you find initially and a librarian can help you with this step. Once you have found a good group of sources, read the introduction or skim through the article to see if it applies to what you're researching. This step can narrow down your list considerably to a much more manageable set of sources. This group of sources should be properly vetted and critically analyzed by reading them in their entirety. Once you have found the ones which add value, you will start with the bibliography. Make sure to list them alphabetically and format them in the way they were requested by your professor. Once you have completed the bibliography, add your annotation under each cited source. Each annotation should be one paragraph of about two to 10 sentences. The annotation should provide future readers with essential critical information and a foundation for future research. Annotation. The annotation is definitely the hardest part and requires the researcher to have knowledge of the topic so that they can pick the appropriate sources. Once a source is chosen, you should use the above list to create your annotation. How is the source reliable? A good way to figure this out is to see if the material is peer or scholarly reviewed. Is the author credible? You have to do a little research on the authors to figure this one out. Who is the intended audience? Some examples could be academic, student, children, or even the public. Is the source relevant? When reading the material, a great way to figure this out is to see if it answers the research question and the importance of the information for your specific needs. Is the information correct? Accuracy is most closely related to credibility. Is it contemporaneous or current? If the material is outdated, then it definitely is not current. Does the author have any bias? If the paper leans far to one side, regardless of what the facts state, then it may be biased. Does the material allow the user to make up their own mind with facts? Objectivity is closely related to bias. The purpose should not be to sway, but to inform. What are the findings? When reading through the material, make sure you understand what the conclusion was. What research methods did the author use? Compare and contrast this source with the other sources in your bibliography. 
You don't have to stick to what is listed above, especially if you find something particularly interesting or valuable in the material you have chosen. Like previously stated, the annotation part should only be about two to 10 sentences, and according to King, should be no longer than 150 words. 150 words may sound easy, but it can be difficult to keep it under, so make sure to be succinct and brief. King also states that annotation should be about 25% summary, 50% critique and evaluation, and 25% reflection and closing marks. It is perfectly acceptable to go over or under because these numbers are approximations and should be used as suggestions. What is critical thinking? If you've ever chosen sources for a paper, then you've probably already used critical thinking skills and not realized it. These skills can be refined over time, but have shown to not only help students excel at the academic level, but also later in life when dealing with real world issues. According to Bodhi, there is not a general consistency among scholars as to a concrete definition of critical thinking. There is, however, a general theme that can be seen in the works of those scholars about critical thinking. Often, being able to self-regulate and cultivate your thinking skills can help you achieve higher academic success, but most often those thinking skills are not formed by the time you come into the academic setting. Instructional videos like this one and instruction by the academic staff here are designed to help you refine those skills. Some have even questioned whether those skills can truly be taught, but this school of thought is outdated and research has shown a growth in thinking skills from freshmen to seniors in an academic setting. According to Burback and Matkin, critical thinking can be traced back to 2,500 years ago with the teachings of Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, who encouraged their students to realize that things are not always what they seem on the surface. Often, people can consistently, cannot consistently produce evidence for their opinions and instead base their arguments or rebuttals on emotions rather than facts. What's included in critical thinking? The purpose of thinking critically is to question all assumptions, bypass judgment, carry out evaluations and analysis, and know when to question. You must be able to carefully look at all sides of an issue or topic before choosing which is the most tenable. Critical thinking has three essential elements according to Bodhi, and those are creative thinking, logic, and problem solving. Each of these essential elements are not equal to critical thinking, but instead make up what is involved in critical thinking. Creative thinking is the ability to look at something in a new way, and while this is involved in critical thinking, it's not the only component to it. Problem solving is quite narrow and does not define critical thinking because critical thinking involves exploration, but it's used in defining the ability to use knowledge, facts, and data to solve a problem. Logic cannot generate thoughts or theories, but can help the reader find fallacies. It is important to keep reflective thinking in mind when analyzing your sources. Reflective thinking is the ability to look back at a task or during and take a really good look at it. While you are reading the source and after, it's useful to evaluate how your mind interpreted what you read because this helps you monitor your own development according to Gantt. Ganazada. One of the most important attributes to critical thinking is the ability to self-regulate. This self-regulation can help you decide what to believe or do with the information you just read. Reflect about what you're reading. Ask yourself, why is this important and how does it apply to the topic? What type of citation styles are there? I know I've said it before, but make sure and use the citation style your professor requests when doing your bibliography. The three most common styles are the American Psychological Association, known as APA, Modern Language Association, known as MLA, and Chicago Manual of Style. APA is most commonly used in the social and behavioral sciences. MLA is used by the humanities. Chicago Manual of Style is most frequently used by business, history, and fine arts. There are over 200 different citation styles, but we are only going to cover these three because they are the most frequently used. If you are required to use a different style, we suggest visiting the library for assistance in proper formatting. 
American Psychological Association, APA. APA citation style is last name with the first initial. Year of the publication is in between parentheses. The title of the article comes next and only the first word and any proper nouns are capitalized, which is called sentence case. Title of the periodical is in title case. Next is the volume number, which is italicized with the article title. Issue number is in parentheses, pages, and lastly, the DOI or URL if one is not given. The above format is for an article in a periodical. With all citation styles, the type of material used will determine the format of the citation. APA uses what is called a hanging indent so that the subsequent lines will be indented. Another important note is to make sure and use the addition that is required and to follow proper punctuation. Modern Language Association, MLA. Similar to APA, MLA starts with the author's last name, but then has the whole first name. Instead of the year, the title of the article in quotation marks, title case comes next. Title of journal, italicized, volume, issue, year, and then pages, followed by the DOI or URL. The citation should be double spaced and have a hanging indent. Like stated with APA, make sure to use proper punctuation and the most recent edition. Chicago Manual of Style Chicago is quite different from the previous two citation styles. There are two different styles of Chicago, and today we are referencing the bibliographic style. The author's whole name is first, the title of the article in parentheses, and capitalized along with the title of the periodical, which will be in italics. Volume number, issue number, pages, and then the DOI or URL if applicable. The style also uses a hanging indent, but will not be double spaced like the previous two. What should you not do? Some simple things to avoid when writing an annotated bibliography are listed on this slide. While you can use in-text citations, most annotations do not require it because the origin of the information you are citing should be clear. You're not describing what you read because that is what abstracts are for. This is an original work by you, your interpretation, assessing the value of the work towards your chosen topic and the overall quality of the source. Unless stated by your professor, annotated bibliographies should be in third person. Your assessment should not be based on your emotions or non-fact-based thoughts. Critical thinking and the evaluation of the source should be stressed over the actual search for sources. Does anyone have any questions? If no one has any questions, we will move on to the exercise. Annotated Bibliography Exercise For this exercise, each student will be handed a short quiz. The quiz will be multiple choice, open book, and electronic sources may be used. The reasoning for allowing the students to use books and electronic sources is that in the real world, students will be allowed to use these tools to create their bibliographies and reference pages. After the quiz is completed and a passing grade is achieved, the students will be allowed to pick a topic from a list that corresponds with a set of sources. Students may not choose sources from different topics. Students will then choose at least three sources and create their annotated bibliography. Students must demonstrate the ability to properly cite sources and use critical thinking to create an annotation. References